So, my fate talk is game mechanics. And Bjarke mentioned during the week that LARP is fiction plus magic circle plus characters plus tools. So this fate talk is mostly about tools. And... And... Peter. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just press this too. Uh -huh. Just left and right. Yeah. I think start from you. Do a restart. You can start from the start. Again. Okay. Yeah. And I will start with the definition of the tools. So tools are instructions, rules, objects that can regulate how the players interact within the fiction. And basically, it's what help us as a players to um, color the canvas or to fill the frame. Uh, by tools, we usually mean, uh, mean game mechanics, and that is rules, replacements, and meta techniques. Uh, Bjarke mentioned replacement as, do you remember? Representation. And by that, uh, we decided actually to use replacement because it's just a better word. So, rules are instructions for the players about what they can and cannot do during the LARP. And it can be implicit or explicit. As for implicit, there are rules that usually are not mentioned as it's something you expect your players to know. For example, from the real world rules, cultural rules or lot traditions. As for cultural rules, for example, um, while greeting each other, you have to and you are accustomed to bow, yeah, to make a bow. And if you want your players to use this in LARP, probably you wouldn't mention that because it's like natural for them. As for lab tradition, uh, for example, in my lab tradition, tape usually represent the wall, like this one. And that means that I can't see through it, I can't cross it like this, because I will close the projector, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so on. So that is cultural and lab tradition rule. But you should be very aware because of these implicit rules. It can be very, very tricky. For example, uh, during, LARP, uh, during Minsk LARP Festival, we had different players from different international LARP communities. And actually, we used this tape thing yeah, on the wall. And I was a game master, and one of the participants, one of the players, he was trying in character, in game, he was trying to draw my attention to like, OK, let me in, let me out. So he was interacting with me as a game master, but I was like this behind the wall, there is the wall. So he didn't get that. Probably I have should mention, I should have mentioned it during the explanations. Okay, nope. And we have explicit rules uh, that are rules that are usually explained to the players as they are not very obvious. Yeah. Uh, and we have replacements. So it can be ob or objects or actions something that represents something else in the game for some reasons. And this reason can be safety. For example, during Biop, bring your own bottle, we use fake alcohol. It can be limited budget. For example, in New Voices in Art, we use posters instead of real pictures. We actually don't need them and it's much more, um, ch it's cheaper. Uh, or, for example, we can speak about replacement of the venue, actually. Uh, for example, we can play LARP in a black box instead of renting or buying castle. Nothing personal, Charles. <laughs> Just, uh, it can be more convenient as well, or it, uh, we can make focus on some uh, especially abstract thing. For example, we can use balloons in white death as a representation of uh, uh, dreams. Yeah. And then we have meta techniques, because when we speak uh, about actions as replacement, we usually call them meta techniques. Uh, which are techniques that are usually used to switch or communicate between the player and the character in-game and gives the player more information about the story than they can get as a character. For example, in a monologue. So if you have in-game in a monologue, you as a player can get more information and you can use it, you can bring it into your character. Is it clear? Yeah, okay. Mm, yeah. And meta techniques can be intrusive and discrete. And here we have some features of intrusive and discrete, but that doesn't mean that they should be like this. They can be, yeah? It's a better word. So intrusive meta techniques can draw attention to itself. They can be very visible. They sometimes used very often, very, uh, very frequent. They intrude into the flow of the game. They can even stop the game for everyone. 
And the uh, example, for example, uh, and the example is uh, when our destinies meet, we can post the game for everyone. Yeah, do you remember? Uh, and as for discrete, we um, can make them very non-visible. They don't stop the game, at least not for everyone. Yeah, uh, they feel very natural in the game uh, and they fit into the fiction. And the example is uh, Helandus Land again. Uh, change of light representing different um, different time of the day. Yeah, it's very uh, very discrete. Uh, as for intrusive meta techniques, some can think that it's not very uh, useful. It's not very good to use intrusive meta techniques because they can stop the game, they can stop the flow, yeah, of the fiction and so on. But that's actually not like it works because. Yeah, of course, you stop the game, you stop the fiction, then you have some instructions from GM or you can use some meta techniques as a player, but still then you continue the flow of the game. And as Jok said, uh, afterwards your brain constructs all the elements, all the parts of the picture, so that's absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. And we go to the fader. We have maximum position, which is intrusive. And the pluses are like this. It helps to focus on some elements or actions or situation in the LARP. Again, why death, yeah? Balloons, for example, or sugar. Uh, it allows things that are not possible in the real world that can happen in LARP. We can read the mind of the people. We can fly, actually. That is very cool. Yeah. Uh, and it allows to use safety rules. Again, hold rule, cut and break rule, and so on. Uh, it adds transparency, with, uh, which can be very, very good for the play as well, because you can use a lot more than if you are like just know nothing and that's it. Uh, and it's very easy to use. And by easy to use, I mean that we, for example, can agree that we will use something very, very simple instead of something very complicated that is in real life. And then we have minuses of maximum intrusiveness which is no opting out of the other player scenes, because I, as a player, can't decide to opt out. It's for everyone. Yeah? Uh, we may not fit, it may not fit into fiction, and that's why it may break the fiction somehow. Or it may break the flow of the game, as I mentioned before. And we have minimum fader, which is discrete. Uh, and the pluses are, it's possible to opt out, because I as a player can opt out of the scene that is going on, because maybe I'm in the middle of something very nice and great. Uh, it doesn't break the flow of the LARP. It fits into the story, that's why it maintains the fiction and that, uh, that maintains the illusion. Uh, it supports immersion into the character, I can feel my character like deeper and better. It is easy to play uh, things to remember. We have less things to remember and we don't have to memorize all of these meta techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, and for minuses of discrete fader, discrete extreme, we have less transparency, which is not very good. Uh, we can make it, uh, it can make it more difficult to step out of the character afterwards, yeah? Uh, it can make safety features harder to see because it's harder to stop the game if you don't know, uh, don't have these breaks of fiction. Yeah, it is very hard to step out. Um, and of course, it can be somewhere in the middle. Uh, and I find it, uh, this fader is uh, quite relative in a way because uh, one the same uh, meta technique can be uh, high, can be low, so it can be disc uh, discrete or intrusive. Uh, for example, if we will take uh, um, name tags. You all have it, yeah? If we are all together playing uh, summer school, like we are doing now, it is very nice and it is not very uh, intrusive because we usually wear a name text, yeah? And for example, if we are playing a medieval LARP or we are playing very good friends, like very close friends, it's probably a little bit intrusive because usually we know the names of each other. Um, okay. And the uh, second slide is about why. So why do we use meta techniques? And usually it can strengthen the drama. It deepens the character and relations as well. It expands the world and time frame. Again, with um, mind reading, flying, or for example, we can uh, play out flashbacks or flash forwards, which is usually, fortunately or unfortunately, is not possible in real life. Uh, it gives more <laughs> tools for GMs and players to influence the LARP. So you, you as a GM can be very active and you can uh, influence the game during the runtime and the play as well. Um, it provides safety for us, again, the safety rules. 
and it increases playability. Uh, for example, we can play out torture without actually torturing people in game. Um, yeah, and I would love to to I would love to leave you with two questions, which is what do you want to achieve in your LARP? And the second one is what are the consequences of your decisions? Thank you.